For veteran journalist Ramita Limbu, there's no blurry line between journalism and filmmaking. She says, it's an extension of my writing. She has been the festival director and member of the annual Kathmandu Mountain Film Festival, KIMF, since its inception in 2000. Limbu was also careful to make the distinction that she considers herself to be a generalist. A friend of mine and myself, um, we decided um, in 2000 to make a documentary on the first group of women climbers, all Sherpas, who were attempting Everest. Um, it had come out in the news um, and as a journalist I was interested in it more so because it was a group of women and I'm interested in the outdoors and I thought it would be great if I could just you know follow these women tell their stories why they wanted to climb so that's how um, I got involved in we called the film Daughters of Everest um, so I made it with a very good friend of mine who is also a journalist a broadcast journalist um, Sapna Sakya uh, we made it together we kind of um, found the money we um, borrowed cameras um, and then we raised um, some funds through family and friends and then we just kind of followed this group of women up to Everest and spent um, six, six weeks of uh, spring climbing season in 2000 uh, following these um, group of uh, women, individuals basically, and why they wanted to climb. Because it was unusual, you know, only Sherpa men were climbing, porters, high altitude Sherpas, but it was very rare. Before that, uh, Pasang Lamu had attempt, attempted Everest and I believe she had um, reached the summit, but on the way down, um, you know, um, she perished. Ramitha Limbu takes a certain pride that many of the filmmakers who are doing well these days had their debut at KIMF. Many have gone on to earn international fame. But of course, one question that pops up every once in a while is the viability of homegrown cinemas at the local box office. If you can point out one filmmaker who doesn't want to make money or want his or her film to be a commercial success, then I'd be surprised. So I'm, when I meet, uh, you know, filmmakers, um, when we're having discussions, I always say that's the, that's the challenge, that you can make a film that appeals to an audience, a larger audience, but at the same time um, is, you know, appreciated by critics. Ani, I think what's important uh, in this context is that originality that is very important to retain or try or that should be reflected in that film whether they make money or not is a separate question it is very important to know the film you're making and the target audience and despite many of the films not doing well at the box office limbu thinks it's great that these directors stay true to their craft. In the end, the persistence of a filmmaker will eventually pay, provided they do justice to this medium. It is important that you try to also cultivate an audience. Whatever you make, I'm gonna, it's going to be a big hit. Everyone has to enjoy it. I have to make money. Of course, you wish that. But then also what I've learned uh, running Kimf is that sometimes you need to cultivate an audience. They, mo they might not like it the first time, the second time or the third time, but film, watching films or appreciating films is also like an exercise, it's exposure. Right? It's not just like everyone likes the same uh, film at the first time. That's where a Nepali director, if he or she wants to make his mark, is how do you get that formula right? KIMF was started in 2000 by a couple of like-minded people who enjoy films, outdoors, traveling, and who want to present Nepal to the world in a way they haven't seen it. Today, KIMF has also become a preferred platform for many aspiring filmmakers who want to showcase their creation through Nepal Panorama. Um, for 2016, we have this big um, dream bhaneki or um, our aim, our goal is to start a Kim Doc Lab where we can get, um, we can invite films from Nepali filmmakers 
uh, whether they're finished or not, a rough cut version, or still, you know, being kind of people uh, at a treatment phase. So, um, and then kind of working with uh, these filmmakers, so, uh, or mentoring them, or, you know, or even just, you know, making suggestions, recommendations, or giving our input, so that, so they can make the best film uh, possible because believe me there are thousands of stories in Nepal if you see what films we get in uh, for Nepal Panorama even if we can't show them at the main festival I mean people in the West are looking to this region to South Asia including Nepal for stories there's so much more happening this is such a vibrant dynamic um, region so they are looking here so Tixa they make films about Nepal but I think it should always be a Nepali making a film about um, you know, we'll probably make not a better film, but at least a film that they feel is this is what truly uh, represents the Nepal that I know. But they have to be equipped to do that. You know, in terms of in terms of craft, in terms of exposure, in terms of funding, resources, which are you know, as you know, it's it's lacking in this part of the world. Um, so I think that's what Kim wants to Kim wants to play a role there. Try to do what we can in that in that area. There are so many stories in Nepal that need to be told, but they need to be told in a way that does not leave the storytellers shamed or blamed. It could be out and out provocation or by embedding reality in fiction and maybe smuggling non-fiction out into the open. Whatever means you choose, one has to stay true to the craft. Also filmmaking is not just a one-man show. Everyone has a say in it and every help matters. Look how well Korean films are doing internationally, you know? Busan. I mean, it's a world, it's an, it's an international festival that people recognize, you know? Iran, to Kune film Iran, people expect, wow, it has to be, um, you know, it has to be a great film. And um, so these are countries that I think where the state has really, you know, gone out and supported artists, filmmakers, and so the industry or that uh, community has grown so that's where, you, and it's reflected in what they are, you know, making. Like, but in Nepal, we still have, you know, I mean, we still, I mean, we have the film development board, um, which is trying to do its bit. It does support some awards at, at Kim. It has been supporting some awards in Kim for the last couple of years. But I think there's so much more um, needed um, to be done. Fiction, non-fiction, whatever you choose. Limbu feels the main challenge here is to make a film that appeals to a larger audience and gets the critics by your side. And the only way to crack that code is by producing stories that retain and reflect the Nepaliness. It's not impossible, but definitely not easy. It's not easy. It's not, um, you know, um, cheap in the long term, I know. It's a lot of time, it's a lot of energy, it's passion, you know. Um, it's 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 money, um, so it is a lot of things. But if you feel um, moved enough uh, by something that you say, no, I need to tell the story, then you should go out there and do it. But at the same time, I think if you are really serious about um, you know taking up filmmaking as a profession, then it's of course always good to get um, you know um, a training. Um, on how to improve your craft. Every week on the MNS Inspire, we feature different individuals from different backgrounds and they have their own different stories to tell you. But one thing that is similar about all of them is that they are strong and inspiring. They believe in their dreams and that is what makes them who they are. Rami Limbu is also the co-founder of the independent documentary The Daughters of Everest and the Sari Soldiers. A documentary feature that follows six Nepali women on the forefront of the Maoist conflict in Nepal.